Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. I'm going to screen or show you how you can screen for your stock's earnings yield with Kevin Matris, our top stock screener here at Zax.com. Now, there's a lot of talk lately about valuations, right. about uh, P.E. ratio, um, but you're talking about a stock's earnings yield. That's something different. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because everybody has suddenly gotten themselves concerned with valuations. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe it's been like a low-level burn, but yesterday when the market went down, everybody was wringing their hands over the idea that the P.E. ratio is right now where we were back in 2009. And yesterday was the 13th of January. Yeah. And yesterday we happened to had seen one of the, uh, the worst down days since the year began. Granted, we're only third day, 13 days into the year, but nonetheless. Um, but so first off, when I take a look at the P.E. ratio for the market, I'm not overly concerned. I mean, part of me thinks to myself, so what? Uh, but one of two things is going to happen. Either the prices are going to come down and that will lower the valuations, or earnings will go up and we will address it that way. But since people are going out of their way to make a comparison to 2009, you can just go back to 2009 and see what happened. Okay. You can see earnings rose. It justified the valuations, and in all reality, as earnings rose, even though prices were going up as well, valuations started to come down. Mm -hmm. And we ended up starting one of the biggest, largest bull rallies we had ever seen. It's been going up ever since 2009. It can, it's continuing to go up right now. So even though we are near 2009 levels, I'm not overly concerned. However, you do have to pay attention to valuations because you want to make sure that you're not getting to an area of extreme. I don't think we're there yet, but again, you do have to monitor it. But I believe that the earnings yield is a better barometer of where the market is and a better predictor as to where stocks will go. And that's what we're talking about today. Okay. So when you're talking about earnings yield, the earnings yield is just that. It is the anticipated yield or the return an investment will give you based on the earnings and the price paid for the stock. Now, the calculation for the earnings yield is the inverse of the P.E. ratio. So let me pull up a couple of slides That's and go through both. Yeah. So everybody knows how to calculate a P.E., but we're going to go through it very quickly. A stock trading at a price of 35 with earnings of $3 has a P.E. ratio of 11.67, which means it's selling at 11.67 times earnings. And another way of looking at it is that you're paying $11.67 for every $1 of earnings the company makes, okay. okay? Now, the earnings yield is different, so let's pull up this next slide. So, using the example above, a stock with $3 of earnings, trading at a price of 35, has an earnings yield of 0.0857 or 8.57%. The earnings yield, also known as the EP ratio, is expressed as a percentage. So a yield of 8.57% would also mean that you're earning 8.57 cents of earnings for every $1 of investment. Now, of course, this is all potential because earnings change, prices change, but in general, this is how you figure it out. All right, so how do you use this? All right, the most common way people will use the earnings yield is you will compare the earnings yield on one stock to another stock, but you also will compare the earnings yield in a broader sense to another investment, which typically will be looked against the 10-year treasury. Okay. All right. So conventional wisdom has it that if the yield on the stock market is below the yield on the 10-year treasury, then stocks might be considered overvalued. Conversely, if the yield on the S&P is greater than the 10-year treasury, then stocks would be considered undervalued. Mm. And the whole idea behind this principle is that stocks and bonds are both competing 
for investors' dollars. So in order to attract as much investor interest as possible, stocks need to be able to entice an investor with a higher yield because of the additional risk that they are assuming for getting into stocks versus the virtual risk-free investment that you have with a 10-year. Mm -hmm. So this is why comparing the, uh, the earnings yield for stocks to the 10-year, because again, investors have a choice, that is why I believe that it's a good barometer for where the market is and where the market is going to go. So you mentioned 2009 before, but if I'm understanding this correctly through just a little bit of reading that I've done about it, some people even used this to forecast the market downturn in 07. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's why this comparison to 2009 is so interesting. So let's first go back to 2007, okay? So in June of 2007, the yield on the 10-year was 4.95%. Okay. However, the earnings yield on the S&P 500 was 4.19%. So not much of a risk premium based on a risk-based investment, right? Mm -hmm. So remember, if the earnings yield on stocks is below the T-bill rate, stocks are considered overvalued. And again, we saw the market really start to begin its historic collapse after that. But here's what's interesting. You take a look at where the earnings yield was back in March of 2009. That's the beginning of this historic bull market that we're still enjoying right now. Right. In March of 2009, the earnings yield on the S&P was 9.51% compared to the 10-year Treasury of 289 and again, with yields well above the 10-year, that made stock investing clearly the more attractive investment. And of course, we all know what happened to the market back then. Now, here's what's interesting, right? We're all talking about 2009. The earnings yield for the S&P right now is 6.35% compared to the 10-year Treasury of 2.84%. So even though the earnings yield is lower than where it was in 2009, mm -hmm. it is still well more than twice as good as what you can get on a risk-free 10-year treasury. So in my opinion, I still believe that stocks is the best place to be, and if you were to use this as a barometer, which I believe has been fantastic at forecasting market turns and stuff like that, I think that this clearly shows that stocks are the best place. All right, do you have a setup for this? Yeah, so the screen that I am running today is is pretty simple. So I'm starting off with price greater than $5. I'm looking at companies with volume greater than 100,000, the typical stuff that I use to make sure that I can get in and out of a stock easily. Okay. But what I want is, since I know the earnings yield on the S&P is like 6.35, I'd like to see something a little bit bigger. So I'm screening for stocks with an earnings yield of greater than 7%. And underneath, you can see that is calculated as the 12-month forward estimate divided by the current price. In addition to that, I want the 12-month projected growth rate to be greater than the S&P. And for good measure, I want all of these stocks to have a Zach's rank of less than or equals to two, which means strong buy and buy. So I definitely want to put the odds of success in my favor like that. All right. And so to be clear, there are stocks that come through the screen. Yeah, there's plenty of great stocks. And what was interesting is, there we go, is when I ran this, I think there was like... Um, I think it was like 36 or 37 stocks, something like that. And, you know, these are, are pretty good parameters that you have to get through. Mm -hmm. So, but the, it, it really spanned a very diverse set of industries. But here's some of them. So you've got Actavis. They have an earnings yield of 7.08%. Aspen Insurance, 86 You can see all the earnings yield down the, uh, on the side. Aegean Marine, that's transportation. Trinity Industries, 10.65%. Fantastic. Fantastic. and United Rentals 7.54. There's a lot of great stocks that have very attractive valuations, fantastic growth rates, mm -hmm. and you can see that you're getting a spectacular potential earnings yield on these companies. So pay attention to, to, uh, to the valuations, but also don't just make your decision on that in a vacuum. Take a look at another very, very good barometer, historically speaking, and that would be earnings yield. 
and I have to ask, does this only apply during earnings season, or can you do this anytime? You can do it anytime. You know, you don't need to check this every single day because you're not going to see wholesale changes on a daily basis. But what you really want to do is you want to see, you know, the positioning from the uh, the stock market to the ten year. You want to see what the trend looks like, but you always want to see how much more am I getting based on the risk I have to assume. Um, but yeah. Earning season, that usually is a time where you will see maybe more changes than at any other time. And I also have to ask, do you own any of those? Uh, mm, 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 no. Okay. Well, as always, if you are watching this video out in syndication land, there is a text article that uh, is uh, sub supplemental to the video that you are watching. So you can get on over to zax.com and link to that text version of this screen right off the homepage of our website. Zax.com is where you should check for that. And if you want to know more about the Research Wizard, that is the tool that Kevin uses to achieve all of his screens, then Zax.com slash Research Wizard is where you should check. With Kevin Matris and the Screen of the Week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.